Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story. It will grip you and have you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a, hopefully, satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end. From the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game, we are going to look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now for reference, we are only going to be observing what the TV show is showing us and what stories being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And before we start, I want to thank you all for watching what I make and ultimately supporting what I do here with liking, commenting, and sharing. For only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, watch all this channel's content early, chat with other fans of the show, and even get exclusive videos every month. With that, let's jump into another epic story. 39 days, 20 people, one survival. Kobe Archa, a 32-year-old hairdresser from Athens, Texas, was a castaway on Survivor's 10th season, Survivor Palau. On a season full of likable, heroic characters, there was one who stood above the rest as the antithesis to all of them and yet still had a sympathetic side. By the time Kobe was done playing, Survivor had seen someone who just shot out of the gate from the very beginning in an age where playing Survivor is still a slow burn to begin with. So what happened with Kobe? Let's find out. Survivor Palau takes a page out of Pearl Island's book and has Jeff rolling up on a speedboat saying, Hey guys, guess what? The game's starting now and all you have are the clothes on your back. And uh, by the way, the first two to make it to shore are getting individual immunity. Okay, bye. But I suggest you make a decision and start acting now because this game is on. Good luck. Pretty much as soon as Jeff is done saying this, Kobe jumps up and seems like he may be willing to swim to shore already? If so, that would be a massive mistake as they are not even close to the shore. This game is on. Thankfully, Kobe does sit back down and tells us how everyone is thinking, should I jump out? Is now the time to jump out? When do I do it? When is the right time? As we were rowing on the boat and we were getting closer and closer to the beach, everybody was thinking, should I jump out? Should I swim to the shore? Should I try to beat the boat? Right away, we are shown Kobe is thinking about this as a game and not like a survival show like many others on the season do. However, two players do jump out of the boat way too early and Kobe smartly does not. After Stephanie and Jonathan jump out, Steph asks, uh, could I possibly come back in the boat? That would be really nice if I could. And Kobe takes advantage of this easy joke opportunity. That's the dumbest thing I've ever done. Can we get off? Can we get back on? What were your names again? <laughs> they all finally arrive on the shore, which sees Ian and Jolanda getting those all important immunity necklaces, but no one really knows what power they hold quite yet. Everyone then starts splitting up to do different chores like building the shelter, getting water, starting a fire, Fire, all the basics. But when getting water, Kobe has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Angie where he tells her he feels close to her because she's weird too. It's kind of a backhanded compliment, but it comes off well to her. I have to say, I sighed a sigh of relief when I saw you because I realized I wasn't going to be the weirdest one here. <laughs> I mean you know, that in the most loving way. I thought the same uh, way. I was like, oh, we're going to totally get lost. You can tell that Angie and I are both cut from the same cloth in the scenario that we think we're different and we're the outcast, but I think we're both gonna have to watch it when it comes to the context of the game. As I said before, no one really knows what's going on here. There are 20 people, no buffs, no direction on what to do, nothing. Is there going to be a tribal council where they all collectively vote someone out before making tribes? Who knows, will there even be tribes? We don't really know yet. Kobe isn't going to risk that that person being voted off first is himself, so he starts planting seeds in others' minds saying, hey, Jonathan, you know him? He kind of sucks, let's vote him out. But I've definitely gone to different groups all day today and said, who are you gonna vote for? Really? That's interesting. 
What about voting for this person? What about Jonathan? And as long as I do it subtly and sneak it in there, I've been looking all over you can change their minds because at this point, everybody doesn't want it to be them. Jeff Probst finally arrives on the beach and what do you know? Ian and Jolanda get to pick their own tribes. However, only 18 of the 20 people will even end up on a tribe and the two remaining people will not. So one man and one woman will not be selected. Thankfully for Gobi, he does get selected to Karor. Jen, picking a guy, tough decision. Kobe. Now Kobe gets to make the next selection for his tribe and he has to pick a woman. And who does he pick? Karen. He picks Karen over Angie and it seems strange that the show would show him getting close to Angie and not Karen if this was going to happen but one thing is clear in the storytelling, Kobe is supposed to be a villain. The two players who are unfortunately eliminated are Jonathan and Wanda and this is truly not a big deal in the grand scheme of things in this season but Wanda is amazing and I am now going to show all of her highlights through her time on Survivor. <laughs> Build a fort gladly. We are survivors! Survivors! completely unnecessary that I did that, but totally worth it. At the immunity challenge, it is a unique one as both tribes have to complete an obstacle course. However, each tribe has a decision to make. They can bring with them any assortment of items presented before them. They have an option of water, food, fire supplies. They can bring all three, they can bring one, they can bring none, it's up to them. It's a real risk reward kind of scenario. Now, Karor smartly picks just the fire supplies, but Oolong tries to take everything. This terrible decision causes them to fall so far behind and even when they reach the part where they need to work together on the boat they blow it it's not even close and Karor wins reward and immunity pretty easily Jeff then offers Karor an option stay at the camp they already built up with Oolong or go to a brand new beach and start all over for some illogical reason Karor picks the new beach you can either go back to what you know and the shelter you helped build or this is a map to a new unknown beach where you can start fresh. Well, why see a beach we already saw? Let's go see something new. New? new? Yeah, let's have a new adventure. Oh, yeah. adventure. You're going to take your chances. Take good chances. Give up what you know yes, we are. for the unknown. Yeah. On their way to the new camp, along with their BFFs, those fire supplies they won, something terrible happens. All of the supplies to make fire were in this heavy steel container that went straight down. And that is it for the premiere episode of Survivor Palau. It was a big one for Kobe and the amount of screen time he was given goes to show that he is going to be a central figure of the season and its story. What we have been shown is how he is smart, cunning, and has no problem being a villain to get his way. In other words, this will be a fun character for us at home. Every season needs someone who will play cutthroat no matter what others think and that is shaping up to be Kobe in the premiere episode. As long as he is around, there will be a fun back and forth with the hero characters of this story. Thankfully, Kobe had a great introduction in the premiere because we move on to episode two where he is almost nowhere to be seen. Karor loses reward and then back at camp decides that now it is high time to work overtime to get their fire supply box from the bottom of the sea. And this is by no means an easy task. <laughs> Right there. I'm so proud of you guys. A good day, a good day. They do successfully get it though, and all's well that ends well as Karor goes on to win immunity again, keeping Kobe safe. We slide into episode three where it seems like Karor is already grating on each other's nerves. Kobe observes that having a full tribe has advantages and disadvantages. Sure, they're all still together, but no one being voted out has people grating on each other because no one can be voted out. This is immediately followed with us seeing Karen and Katie just not getting along at all. Nine strong has its advantages and disadvantages because obviously we're all still together, we're still strong. Yeah, I think people are grading our nerves even worse because you know you can't ever get rid of anybody. You know you're stuck with them. Because everything I say, you have some snotty remarks. I throw a freaking stick in the fire. You're like, 
Oh, they said don't throw a stick in the fire. Don't tell me what to do, Katie. You said the guy said don't throw a stick in the fire. The embers are like everything no, I, I did it on me. Get off me. Karor does go on to lose reward, but then they win the all important immunity challenge. That is three in a row, leaving Kobe safe once again. Immunity at stake. Episode 4 is here and it comes with some crucial information as to where Kobe stands in regards to his tribe's social standings. Karor and Oolong are tasked with picking a representative for each tribe to do a mysterious unnamed task. Kobe offers to do whatever the task is and Tom completely ignores him. It may also be good to mention here that Tom is essentially the leader of Karor, so if Tom ignores him, he's basically being ignored. I'm, I'll, I would definitely be willing to go. I would do it. I would do it. I'll, I'll speak right out. I don't have to do a vote. Ian, you've made many good decisions you've been the team leader here you want to go i say you go but it's like nobody listened to us they just said so should it be greg or should it be in i want to go well should it be greg or should it be in i want to go now kobe does recognize all of this and realizes that he is in the minority of a 5-4 split on his tribe by picking the team leader the separation of the group was just obvious katie jennifer greg Ian and Tom are one unit, so that makes five against four. Once we saw them all band together, it was obvious that we're definitely the underdogs here. As it turns out, the representative ends up picking tools for their bathroom building reward challenge, which Karor wins, and ends up having Survivor Production build them possibly the best shelter of all time. Let's go put them in a great reward. Yeah. Instead, we get a construction crew. At the immunity challenge, it's a sumo style competition one on one. You gotta shove the other person off the platform before they shove you off. In Kobe's first matchup, he phases off against James and. Survivor's ready. Go! Kobe comes out strong. James is in! Kobe wins! Kroar leads 3 2. However, Kobe has to face James once again. Will James learn from his mistakes? This time, the tribes are tied up, and whoever wins this matchup wins immunity for their tribe. So, what happens? Survivor's ready. Go! James comes on strong out of the gate. Kobe, yeah! Kobe trying to push him over with his shoulder. And he's got him. James is in. Kroar wins their fourth straight immunity challenge. Karor wins immunity thanks to Kobe, and this actually nets Kobe some backhanded compliments from James later on in the episode about how much he respects Kobe. Feels terrible having my butt whooped by a homosexual, you know? But a lot of gay folks are strong, man. They all working out at the gym and all, you know? Man, he's a hairdresser. He don't look like he's got any muscle tone. I ought to be able to whoop him. I tell you what, that boy right there got some ass behind him. Life is good as we begin episode 5, especially for Greg and Jen who have been getting super close. Funnily enough, this is the exact same thing that happened on Oolong with Jeff and Kim. Anyways, everyone is noticing and it is placing a target on their back since everyone's on high alert for another Rob and Amber. I mean, Jennifer had her hand on Greg's stomach, rubbing on it. I mean, it's very obvious. They gotta think we're stupid if we can't tell that they're together. At the challenge, Jeff pulls out a plot twist. Sure, we're playing for reward today, but no one is getting immunity as both tribes are going to tribal council no matter what. Win or lose, both tribes are going to tribal council tonight. Both tribes will vote one tribe member out. Karor does go on to win the reward challenge, which nets them beef stew at Oolong's tribal council. And back at camp, Kobe says, hey guys, when we eat the beef stew, let's not rub it in Oolong's face about us winning it and eating it and how good it tastes. Let's keep that to ourselves. Keep this in mind because it will come up later. Can I make another suggestion too? Tonight, we're gonna have to eat in front of them. Can we be nice about it and not giggle and we laugh will. and moan too much? Now that Karor finally has to vote someone off, it seems like everyone already knows who that will be. Willard. He opens up to Kobe about being the first voted out of the tribe, and the music here is indicating that we should really feel bad as Kobe is sympathetic to Willard. I think I'm going tonight. Can you, can you fit into my shorts? Oh, Willard. That made me sad. I could absolutely say with 100% certainty, tonight will be Willard. However, he then immediately calls Katie worthless and would rather she go home over Willard, kind of cutting into the whole uh, nice moment we had. The only person pissing me off is Katie, but nobody will do anything about it. She doesn't do anything, and she's still here. I don't even care how far I get in the game, but if Katie gets further than me, I will just puke, puke, puke. But what is important here for Kobe's game is that he knows he can't stop Willard from being voted out, and he doesn't want to be mean just to get his way. I don't have the numbers. I can't change those other people's minds it's not gonna happen all it'll do is set me apart from the tribe 
And like I said, it's a popularity contest. Finally, it seems like Karor is playing the game as the threat of being voted out is real. And Greg confines in Kobe a secret plan to flip on Tom, Ian, and Katie to make a secret Final Four alliance with himself, Janu, and Jen. The main interesting thing that happened today was with Ken and Barbie. Greg basically told me that him and Jennifer want to make a secret alliance to the top four with me and Janu. If we wanted to, we could flip from the Katie, Tom, and Ian side to the Janu and Kobe side, and we could start picking off who I perceive to be the bigger strengths in Tom and Ian. At Tribal Council, we finally hear the clearest explanation of how Kobe is approaching this game of Survivor, which isn't perfect, but it is uniquely Kobe. I don't care. I'm just being me. I am social, I am a butterfly, I do want to talk to everybody. So I just do it, and if that costs me the game in the end, well, so be it. Willard is then voted out in an eight to one vote. Willard, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Once Karor is done with their tribal and Oolong comes in for theirs, the beef stew is unveiled and everyone, including Kobe, basically rubs it in about how good it is, despite saying earlier that they would not do this at all. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Are y'all gonna cry? Oh, no oh. Episode six opens with everyone hard at work and Kobe tells us all about this, including what Katie's up to. Camp Kuror had craft day. Well, just Katie, everybody else was working. Didn't help with the fire, didn't go hunt, didn't go do anything, but she made necklaces, God love her. I thought it'd be harder than this. A hilarious joke to be sure, but a mean one. Kobe really seems to not like Katie as we have seen him continually dog on her time after time to the point where it makes you wonder, is she the next to go for Karor? We see this rivalry far too often to ignore it. But no time to think about this too hard as the challenge is afoot and Karor gets themselves amped up the way any normal group of adults do. We really want to win this. However, they do lose reward despite all the amping up. I'm not sure what happened. But nonetheless, when it comes time for immunity, Kobe sits out and is doing his own side commentary as the challenge takes place, where we see him being negative about Karor and their chances time after time. Okay. Ahead of us. Oolong has used every piece of rope they have. We did not. This is where all your earlier knot tying is going to pay off. Now, either the storytelling is trying to show us how negative Kobe is, or that Oolong is going to lose, so which is it? There we go! Yeah! yeah. Karor wins their fifth straight immunity challenge! Episode 7 arrives, and Oolong is down to only three castaways while Karor has eight. This battle has truly become a lopsided affair. Good for Kobe, though, and it keeps getting better for Karor as a whole, as Tom kills a shark and becomes the ultimate king of their camp. <laughs> How'd you get it? I hit him with the machete, cut in half. Woo! So Tom went to here catching the shark. And so it's like, oh. The second he caught it, me and Greg both looked at each other and went, hmm. It's gonna be a little harder to vote him off now. At the reward challenge, we see once again Kobe being a negative Nancy about Karor, and this is a trend that seems unfavorable for him unless Emerge is incoming and he will be roping in Oolong with his other three minority tribe mates on Karor to become the majority, but we don't know for certain yet as Karor does win reward despite all this negativity from Kobe. We could see what they were doing from here. I didn't see any smoke at all, and almost their whole plan was fire, so my fear, I think, might have come to truth that I don't know if they got the fire lit. Greg and Jen's relationship keeps getting more and more obvious to everyone, but Kobe doesn't really care for one reason alone. Greg and Jen, they joke about it, about him being the makeout bandit, and they kiss and blah, 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 blah. I don't know, I don't really care. As long as I can get them on my side, my vote. At the immunity challenge, Kobe is put into the crucial position of being the puzzle caller. This challenge and its success basically rides or dies on his shoulders. So what happens? And with that, Thor wins immunity for the sixth straight time. Kobe is successful, and that's now the second challenge he's basically single-handedly won for his tribe. We are on to episode eight, and Oolong is now down to two members versus Karor's eight. Is it finally time for the merge? Except for Thailand, this is traditionally the time for it when there are 10 members left. Karor's camp has become infested with rats. They have always been there since they made the poor decision of picking a new beach, but now the rats have really grown bold because they realize these humans will not attack and eat them. I don't know if, uh, if we've gotten sloppy with food or we're cutting the coconuts too close to the camp or 
I just think it's that the rats have got comfortable with us and realize that we're not a threat to them. Kobe then complains about the laziness of his tribe and says, you know what, Karor deserves these rats. In a way, he is right, but the negative tone he is saying all of this in, combined with the ominous music, says otherwise. I'm the one who has to go get firewood. I'm the one who has to keep the fire going. I'm the one who has to boil the water. I'm the one who has to go hunt food. Those girls don't do anything. Especially Jennifer, Katie, and Janu. Katie and Jennifer don't do anything all day long. I've never seen them touch a piece of wood since we've been here. And now Janu is on her eighth straight day of boohoo, I won't go home. Would you quit already? Get out of the game. I want to take all three of those girls and push them in that fire. <sighs> Karor goes on to win reward, and then at the immunity challenge, Kobe is once again put into that crucial spot where he has to do the puzzle, and we once again see him succeeding for his tribe and pulling off the win. That is now three for Kobe. Victory at sea. Karor is right. Karor wins immunity again. But it does seem like his immunity wins have really gotten to him on a deeper level, which has us learning a lot about who he was pre-survivor and how this experience is shaping him so far. As a kid, I never played sports. I was always called the girly guy, you know, as a sissy. People would pick on me and I would just give up. I ended up quitting school because people made fun of me. I've given up a lot in my life. But I wasn't gonna let anybody make me quit this time no matter how hard it is. All in all, it feels like we are now being shown a side of Kobe that we didn't see before. He's a bit sympathetic, and this is something that could have easily have been left out of his story to continually craft this villainous arc he has going, but instead it adds a much needed layer of complexity. Let's hope this continues. <laughs> Episode 9 starts with an unusual thing being said by Ian. You see, Ian is normally a very positive guy who is fun-loving and kind of a goof, so when he says Kobe is a pain in the butt, it means a lot. Kobe and Janu have been pains in the asses for the past three or four days. Kobe got kind of this attitude to him, and really he's become the powder of the tribe. It's really getting annoying. So why is that? Why is Ian saying Kobe's a pain in the butt when Ian is one of the most easygoing guys on this tribe? As it turns out, Kobe has grown sick of everyone, and he made a decision on day 22 that will definitely not help his game in the long run. So on day 22, I decided, screw it, I'm not gonna bust my butt to keep these people in line. Mm -hmm. Let us run out of firewood, let us run out of food, I don't care. It finally happens. Oolong is done, and the only remaining member left, Stephanie, comes to Karor to join their tribe. Now this isn't technically a merge, but it is a merge nonetheless in our minds. Katie immediately sucks up to her and Kobe doesn't like this at all, really driving home his rivalry with her. Everybody started kissing Stephanie's butt the second she got into camp. That was hilarious. I wasn't expecting that. Katie shot up Stephanie's butt the second she got here and she's like, Remember the first day when we landed? Remember the first, we get it. We all saw each other the first day, Katie. You don't have a special bond with Stephanie. And she can see just how tight we are as Karor. We're so tight and sweet and lovable. Yeah, right, whatever. As part of the merge celebration, two natives come to show Karor how to catch fish, which is a simple two-step process. Step one, catch bait. Step two, use the bait to catch fish. The natives say they need two people to catch bait while two people catch fish. Kobe volunteers to catch bait and Tom cuts a deal with the natives to have three people catch fish instead of two. Kobe doesn't like this at all, and he gets quite petty about it. Two do bait, two go fish. I'll okay. stay and do bait. She left out again as usual. That's fine. I'll you stay with the girls. You just said you'd like to stay and Because do I thought we were tapping it, but whatever. That's fine. I'll I'll have I, I like I'm gonna to do go bait. Fish. Kobe, do you want to come and learn to fish? Tom, Ian, and Greg then go out fishing, and Kobe says, good luck, you guys. And this next part is a bit hard to make out, but I think he's saying that Tom is an ass. Good luck, you guys. Tom. This is then followed up by Kobe making fun of Tom and he is just on a tear this episode. He wasn't kidding about how day 22, he stopped caring. Today when the two Palauans were leaving, Tom would not stop kissing their butt and just laughing at everything they said and he has this fake laugh he brings out and he would say, if you're ever around our camp again. <laughs> Kobe then approaches Stephanie thinking he can flip Greg and Jen to his side along with Janu, therefore holding a 5-4 to four advantage over Tom, Ian, Katie, and Karen. While everyone sees him walking off with Steph, he says, who cares? By talking to her first, he has dibs. They're all going to be so mad. I'm going to get it. I really don't care. Yeah, because they know what I'm doing. 
Because I was so bold about it, I did it on purpose. He then proceeds to tell Stephanie everything he knows about everything. To be fair, it all seems to be fairly accurate information from what we've been shown on the show, minus him not realizing that Greg and Jenna really are closer to Tom and Ian than he suspects. I knew that it would almost be like claiming land. Whoever got to her first would make a bigger impact. So I did it first. The second I got through talking to Stephanie, Katie and Jennifer grabbed her the second she walked back to camp and they went and talked to her. That's all right, I talked to her first. What makes this bad though is how Stephanie takes this information, uh, processes it, and then spills it all to Katie, who of course is going to relay it to the rest of her alliance. So Steph talked to Kobe and um, immediately came back over to me and told me everything that he said. She's like, I just wanna make sure that I'm okay with you guys because we told her when we were on the other tribe, we're all okay. At the immunity challenge, it is safe to say Kobe's in some hot water, whether he realizes it or not. Nothing in this episode has shown anyone else to be a target, so the story is painting him here as the clear favorite to be booted next, which makes it all the more painful because the moment Jeff comes out and says, I got some donuts if someone wants to jump off their platform, Kobe takes him up on that and loses immunity on purpose. I can definitely do two donuts each. Ah! Kobe's coming in for the donuts. Uh, Either they want to go home or they don't think they're in danger of going home. We then immediately go to tribal council and it's clear how this is going to go down as Kobe is voted out eight to one to one with not even Janu voting with him. Kobe? Travis spoken. It's time for the other. So let's break this down. How is Kobe Archa as a character? Every season needs a good villain and Kobe was just that. He had a big personality, seemed judgmental and played it off like he didn't care what others thought about him. On a tribe full of people trying to be heroes, Kobe embraced who he is and had that extra layer of complexity that makes any villain someone who's just fun to watch. Now he wasn't just a villain though, he was a person. He was sassy, funny and told us exactly what he thought with no filter and I wish every castaway had no filter when talking to us in the same way that Kobe does then they could be as memorable as him. Out of 24 character moments shown on the show, nine were heroic and 15 were villainous, making Kobe Archa a villain character on Survivor Palau. Now, how is Kobe as a strategist? I guess the easy answer would be he was good up until day 22, but I think we saw signs prior to that showing just how annoyed he was getting with his own tribe, even if he wasn't saying any of it to their face. This is the sort of thing that will be conveyed through nonverbal cues as well, no doubt, even from things we weren't shown here on the show. Despite this, Kobe Kobe was a social butterfly when he wanted to be and he could befriend anyone when he was being nice. If it weren't for a collapse in episode 9, he makes it at least a few episodes further than what we are shown. But it seems like maybe him showing how good he was in challenges combined with being the leader of the opposing alliance to Tom and Ian was creating too much of a target that just couldn't be minimized. When he was good, he was good, but when he was bad, it really just hurt his game. Out of 18 strategic moments shown on the show, 10 were smart and 8 were dumb, making Kobe Archa a smart strategist on Survivor Palau. Now, Hold on a second, wait. What happened with Katie? Why was there all this buildup between him and her only to have him voted off unceremoniously? Well, actually, it is ironic as at final tribal council, Kobe's the only person to vote for her to win over Tom and even to this day, he doesn't regret this vote. I asked for honesty tonight and I got it. But it wasn't from you, Tom. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please consider supporting me and this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes all this possible, so thank you, and thank you for watching.